Hello everyone. Today I want to steal a little bit of your time to chat to you about my favorite and one of Wildlife's most popular itineraries. And this particular safari we call the best of Kenya. And this year will be the fourth year that I host this particular safari and Wildlife as a brand are proud to say that they've been running and hosting the safari for the past eight years which is pretty phenomenal. It's a product that works um, and it is extremely special, not only to me, but to the brand as well. And we take six guests into various parks throughout Kenya, namely the Masai Mara, the Amboseli, Lake Nakuru and Lake Naivasha twice a year. This particular safari is designed in order for our guests to get up close and personal with the large cats, and the large elephants of Africa. And there is just something mind blowing about this particular adventure, because each time I get back and host this particular safari, it seems to top the experience from the previous time I visited every single time. Here's a quote that to me fits so well when it comes to the best of Kenya safari. Imagination is more important than knowledge. Knowledge is limited. Imagination encircles the world. Quote by Albert Einstein. Why or how would this quote fit, you may be wondering. Well, this takes me to my reason as to why this is one of my favorite itineraries. And it's because of the incredible diversity throughout the journey. As I mentioned before, I've hosted the safari and many other safaris in my time doing what I did and doing what I currently do and never have I seen so much diversity not only from the, the destination or from destination to destination but also from year to year as I've seen on this particular safari. Let me tell you a little bit more about the diversity. Amboseli is, well let's start with Amboseli. The Amboseli is best known for being able to get up close and personal with large herds of African elephant, but is also home to many other mammals, including lion, cheetah, spotted hyena, Maasai giraffe, hippo, zebra, wildebeest, and this is just to name a few. And obviously don't forget about the great birding one can experience in the Amboseli, as there are over 420 species of bird recorded in the area. Now let's get to the area that these animals live in, the landscape of the Amboseli. It is quite an incredible area with five different vegetation types with year round green marshes, short grasslands, fever tree type forests or thickets as some refer to them as, a massive, but when I say massive, it is absolutely huge dry lake bed, uh, which I often refer to it as resembling the moon. And then of course, the foothill of the beautiful Mount Kilimanjaro. Moving on, let's chat a little bit about Lake Nakuru. Lake Nakuru is a phenomenal place. It's home to a large mystical fever tree forest, which or where one is always on the lookout for tree climbing lions, obviously tree climbing leopard, both black and white rhino, the Rothschild giraffe, which for those of you who didn't know is one of the most endangered populations of giraffe at the moment. And this forest surrounds the huge lake Naku. The lake's abundance of algae is what attracts the vast quantity of flamingo that famously line the shores. Other bird species also flourish the area. And these birds include pelican, African fish eagle, goliath heron, hummercorp, pied kingfisher, varose eagle, among other of their kinds. And not too far from Lake Nakuru, one will find Lake Naivasha. And both of these lakes are obviously Rift Valley lakes and are absolutely beautiful. But let's chat a little bit about Lake Naivasha. Lake Naivasha breaks the vehicle bound safari so well. And the reason why I say this is because our guests get to enjoy two boat bound safaris on this incredible lake, which is a complete change in motion and landscape. 
The lake is home to a variety of um, types of wildlife, including 400 different bird species, a sizable population of hippo, and if you're lucky, and at times we have been, we get to see animals coming in towards the shore for a drink. And these animals include buffalo, zebra, waterbuck, and Maasai giraffe. Lastly, let's talk a bit about probably the most well-known reserve in Kenya, and this is the Maasai Mara National Reserve. This reserve, in all honesty, speaks for itself, I'm sure. Uh, but the, the endless rolling hills of the Mara and the beauty of the river just leaves me in awe every single time I revisit. The diversity of wildlife in this reserve is just mind-blowing. And for some reason, there is always some kind of thrilling action or special moment that takes place in this reserve every single day. And the fact that we operate in the Mara Triangle during our time in the Mara during the best of Kenya, we get to experience a more intimate safari, if I may. And the reason why I say this is because the Mara Triangle is a, a well-controlled conservancy with a lot less vehicle pressure, and therefore we can spend more time in sightings. Um, and a lot of the times we even sit in a sighting where you don't even see another vehicle, except the other wild eye vehicles, of course. And it is absolutely incredible, truly special. So now kind of wrapping up by combining the passion, knowledge and experience of our team in East Africa, we have taken a safari experience in Kenya to a whole new level. And we truly believe that we're giving you the very best of Kenya. So if I had to ask myself, how would I describe the best of Kenya using one word, I would probably use the word wondrous. For those of you who have joined me, myself or Wild Eye on this adventure may agree with me. You may have your own word that will describe it. Um, but in all honesty, any positive word that you can think of will fit best when it comes to this particular experience. Um, because it is absolutely incredible and I I really do wish this exciting adventure upon all of you. But before I say goodbye, I would like to read some words from guests that have joined me on this particular on this incredible adventure in the past years which really touch touch deep and which I am also truly grateful for because every single word is true. So let's get started. Our whole experience vastly exceeded expectations, and that's a very good thing. Sue took over 6,000 photos, and I made millions of memories. Daniel Spradling. Thank you, Daniel. This was my second safari with WildEye. The first was the Great Migration, which was so epic I was sure I could never experience such a magnificent adventure again. I was very pleasantly surprised to find that the Best of Kenya tour was just as exciting and fulfilling. The one thing that was common between the two was the excellent service, education and guidance that was provided by Michael Laubscher. We had so much fun with him and laughed until the sides of our cheeks hurt. He went out of his way to accommodate some special requests and to make sure that my 50th birthday celebration was one that I will never ever forget. Our driver Jimmy was absolutely unbelievable. The man has some kind of intuition with the animals that always allow him to actually predict where and when they will appear. He has visual superpowers that allow him to spot creatures hiding in tall grass and dark spaces from a mile away. We were constantly amazed with him. I will definitely, definitely be back soon for another epic wild eye adventure. Susan Schmitz. Thank you so much, Susan. When I decided to join February's Best of Kenya, practically at the last minute, 
I was not particularly excited. Of course, it would be a good safari since it's with, it is with WildEye and Michael Laubscher is a splendid guide slash photographer, but Kenya, that's covering familiar ground. Good enough, I thought, but not exciting. How wrong I was. It turned out to be one of my best photo safari experiences. I no longer wonder why Kenya is so popular. Seemingly, it has everything. The lodges were well chosen, and I remember how, after completing each stay, we wished we could have stayed longer. The routine was two game drives a day, during which Michael alternated between the two vehicles. He did a splendid job, giving us the benefits of his experience. From hardcore nitty gritty technicalities, like best exposures and focal length, to the finer points of composition. I feel that I have grown as a photographer, as a direct result of listening to him. Of course, it didn't hurt to be lucky. Either spotting Tim, or should I say Tusker Tim, the bull elephant of the Amboseli, and spending time around him, witnessing a hundred strong herd of elephants rushing to the night's lodging at Kilimanjaro foothills and silhouetting through their dust against the orange sunset. And there were other, more personal magic moments like wishing to see the black rhino in the wild and one appearing right away in the Mara. And the season of silvery long grass in the Mara waving in the wind against the endless horizon is just pure poetry. I also like the challenge of the water bird photography on Lake Naivasha and learned what not to do the next time the fish eagle swoops down to fish. The water birds offered us a brand new challenge. I am ready for the next time. All in all, it was a great safari to remember. Thanks to the skills and experience of Michael, I'll go, I'll go back in a heartbeat. In fact, I've signed up for my next adventure already. Turgai Uza. Turgai, thank you so much. There are no words to explain how special this trip was for us. Not only did we learn a ton, we laughed the whole time and enjoyed every single moment. Michael went over and above to make it an unforgettable experience. Hands down, Jimmy and Sammy deserve a huge thanks for being the very best drivers we could have hoped for. Wild Eye, thank you too. Lorraine Carafas, thank you so very much. The best of Kenya was easily one of the best I have ever done. Trying to pick the most thrilling of the four destinations is tough, but a sweet task. Boating around Lake Naivasha was an unexpected delight. We observed and shot a stunning number of and variety of bird life. We saw countless pelicans, kingfishers, cormorants, heron, and several other species on and around the lake. Lake Nakuru National Park served up an even larger, richer visual feast. From the lake and its surrounding escarpment and ridges to the fever tree forests and Makalia waterfalls, we were immersed in the kaleidoscope of rhino, giraffe, buffalo, lion, and a ton of other mammals and birds in their glorious natural habitat. I saw and shot a striped hyena for the very first time, and only time. We were also treated by the incredible sight of an overambitious leopard being harassed by a troop of pissed off baboons. I thought I knew what to expect from the Masai Mara. This was my fourth trip, and my first trip outside of the migration crossing season. However, the bloody play still managed to amaze, astonish, and over-deliver. In February, the Mara's mantle of vegetation is strikingly distinct from, from the, its appearance in August. Time and again, I was stunned 
by how this incredible place was so familiar, yet so different. By the way, you haven't lived until you've seen a silhouette of a giraffe cantering across the enormous grasslands, bathed by the dawn colours and light. When you have a terrific guide like Michael, you will capture images which will continue to refresh your soul long after the trip is done. Without taking anything away from the other three destinations, my most endearing memories were forged at Ambicelli. I swear, some dawns and evenings, Ambicelli's vistas almost made me weep. Unless your soul is totally dead, you will be overcome with emotion when you sit in the presence of a gigantic bull elephant strolling directly towards you across the vast plains. Under those enormous skies in the shadows of the magnificent snow-capped Mount Kilimanjaro. And that's just one of the five distinct habitats that Ambicelli is blessed with. Each one is unique. Everyone is glorious. This place is beyond incredible. Wildlife experiences can be enhanced or diminished by the people one travels with. My non-photographer wife only shot with her iPhone, but I think she enjoyed this trip even more than I did. She definitely came away with memories and images no less precious than mine. I'll never forget the absolute delight on her face as she touched down after the balloon ride over the Masai Mara. It was like she, she's just seen heaven. Sammy, our driver, was delightful from start to finish. Witty, chatty, cheerful, and endless, endlessly accommodating. We didn't have a dull moment in our truck. Another measure of a truly successful safari are the friendships formed. Getting to meet, know, and stay in touch with Manfred, Robin, and Barbara, our fellow guests, in a truly special delight. I cannot say enough great things about Michael's guiding. His knowledge, patience, attentive and tirelessly devoted to create and enhance his guest's experience. He gave me space to shoot familiar scenes in familiar ways and encouraged me to step outside of my normal capture and process routines and try different things. I'm convinced if you have to do only one safari in your life, you can't go wrong doing this one. If you've done a dozen and are becoming jaded, do this one. It will rekindle your spirit and refire your passion. Deji, love the way you write and thank you so very much for those kind words. And there you have it for the testimonials. Thank you all once again for sending these through to me. Um, and these are, as I mentioned, true words from past guests that got to experience what truly is the best of Kenya. But just before I wrap up, please note that there are two best of Kenya itineraries every year, as I mentioned right in the beginning, one running in the month of February and the other running in the month of July. And I'm quickly going to explain the differences between these two itineraries quickly. So the departure in February and as I've mentioned earlier on, is outside of Kenya's peak safari season. And therefore the reserve is a lot quieter, which is so incredible because you get to spend more time in sightings, see less vehicles, see less vehicles in sightings. And, and yeah, it is truly one of the coolest ways to experience the Masai Mara. The color as well in the area due to the rains are incredible green, green grass. And the contrast you get there is just truly mind blowing. And also, with regards to the safari in February, the, the best of Kenya safari in February, it's also been designed in a, in a way where if folk would like to do a longer stay or a longer safari and not only the 10 days in Kenya, it can also be easily bolted onto our best of the Serengeti safari, which will then increase your stay to another 14 days uh, in and around the Serengeti, which is quite exciting. But the itinerary for the February departure runs as follows. One will fly from Nairobi into the Masai Mara for three nights and will stay at 
uh, Serena Hotel in the Masai Mara. From there, we do a road transfer to Nakuru, where we'll then spend two nights in Lake Nakuru National Park at Sarova Lion Hill. From there, we then take a road transfer to Naivasha, which is literally right next door, where we'll stay at Sopa Lodge for one night. Thereafter, we will then make our way to our final destination of the trip, which is the Amboseli, a road transfer to the Amboseli, and we'll spend three nights at Serena Amboseli. And after the safari, we will then fly back to Nairobi. Moving on to the July itinerary, it is the exact same itinerary, just backwards. And what I mean by this is that we will fly from Nairobi into the Amboseli. We will spend our first three nights at Serena Amboseli. From there, we'll take a road transfer to Lake Nakuru, which is two nights at Sarova Lion Hill. We'll then take a short trip next door to Naivasha, where we'll spend one night at Sopa Lodge. And remember, Naivasha is where we break up the vehicle bound safaris and enjoy boat cruises around Lake Naivasha. And then from there, we'll do our last trip from Naivasha to the Masai Mara and spend three nights in our very own camp in the Masai Mara. And it is it is awesome. If you don't know of the Wild Eye Camp yet or you haven't heard of it yet or heard of our staff that work for us in East Africa, do some research because they are incredible people. It's an incredible camp. And I think it's the thing I look forward to most every single year when it comes to safari or safari time and the safari season kicks off is to get back to Kenya to spend time with our staff because they they truly become family um, and then after those three nights you fly back to Nairobi and it's the end of your safari unless and the reason for us changing the adventure or the safari itinerary and kind of flipping it on it's on it it's on its head in the month of July is so that the guests that join us on this particular safari also stand a great chance of witnessing migration action and usually we do get lucky and we see either mass herd movements sometimes very lucky river crossings in the three nights at the end of best of Kenya July um, but if you are worried that you might not see it and this is another reason why we packaged it the way we have is because guests that join us on the best of Kenya who would like to increase their chances of seeing migration action can then easily combine the best of Kenya July with our first Mara peak week in our camp in the Masai Mara and spend a whole um, extra week in the Mara which is pretty awesome, I would say. It's really incredible. <laughs> um, let's quickly chat about the weather, uh, recommended gear for the stay and the time out there and the vehicles that we'll be spending most of our days in. So let's start off with the weather. Um, the climate in the month of February or year round is pretty average when it comes to Kenya. Uh, but in the month of February, there's average daytime temperatures of around 30 degrees Celsius. So that's 86 degrees Fahrenheit and an average night temperature of about 12 degrees Celsius 54 degrees Fahrenheit and with an average rainfall of about 150 millimeters and when I say 150 millimeters one can always expect rain in East Africa because it's a very tropical region close to the equator um, so thunder showers in the afternoon is quite a, a common and normal occurrence um, but when I chat about the vehicles later you'll realize that it is not too much of a fuss or a worry because you'll be well covered and isolated within the vehicle. Uh, temperatures in the month of July are a little bit cooler with daytime temperatures averaging around 24 degrees Celsius, 75 degrees Fahrenheit. And the evenings are also slightly cooler, so around 10 degrees Celsius, 50 degrees Fahrenheit, and a similar rainfall uh, in the month of July. Um, so regardless as to if you join us in June, uh, July or February, pack a lightweight warm fleece because early mornings and evenings with the winds 
it will be needed, I can promise you. Um, let's chat about the vehicle quickly, because if it does rain, the vehicle will obviously be your saving grace and it'll keep you nice and dry. And we use Toyota Land Cruisers in East Africa. And how these vehicles are put together is that we have taken out two of the six seats that are positioned in the back of the vehicle. So we've taken the middle row of the seat out. The reason for this is because it gives you as guests in the vehicle, and obviously if you're carrying a bigger lens and a few cameras, uh, the opportunity to move around a little bit more um, and you have more space to move and position yourself in order to take photographs of whatever it is you are interested in. Um, and in these vehicles as well, we have two big, uh, or one big fridge, which will keep all your drinks cold, and this will be soft drinks, beers, waters, or any drink of your choice. Um, you name it, and we'll pack it in there. We've got two snack bags, usually filled up with local crisps and the best nuts you can imagine. If you do jump on board, make a note of this. Be sure to grab yourself a bag of honey-coated macadamia nuts or honey-coated cashew nuts, which are my favorite. Um, they are absolutely incredible. Um, and the, what we do um, in East Africa on the safari is we divide the group of six guests that join us into the two vehicles. So there's three guests per vehicle, which allows more than enough space for geared camera bags and to move around comfortably. Um, and these Toyota Land Cruisers are what we refer to as pop tops. So the roof basically pops up as we enter the reserve, which allows us to stand in the vehicle, shoot over the top. There are bean bags on board for you to stabilize your camera on. Um, and then also we've got massive windows which open up and your your uh, camera gear can obviously be stuck out these windows and um, if you'd like to shoot from a lower level you can move the bean bags around um, and yeah it is a pretty comfortable photographic um, condition to be in if i have to say so myself and what happens is every day i will rotate between vehicles um, and spend time with each set of guests um, every second day and um, yeah, let's move to the last topic, camera gear. What camera gear to pack? I always recommend packing two camera bodies. Reason being is because two of the areas, well, actually three of the areas that we'll be traveling to, the Amboseli, extremely dusty, the Masai Mara, extremely dusty, and at times, Lake Nakuru can also be very, very dusty. So I'd recommend carrying two camera bodies Therefore, it eliminates you having to change lenses and cameras um, in a particular photographic scene every time. So it'll be great to have two camera bodies. Um, and camera bodies of choice is irrelevant. You shoot with what you have or you shoot or use what you're comfortable with using. Um, but when it comes to lenses, this could become quite particular because in areas such as the Amboseli, and the Maasai Mara, a lot of the times the animals are quite far off in, a, um, in the far distance and off-roading is not permitted in all the areas. So I would recommend for this particular safari to carry at least a lens with a minimal focal length of about 400 millimeters. You can get away with 300 millimeters, but it is pushing it a bit. So a 400 millimeter lens would be great. So that's either 100-400 or a 200-400 or a fixed 400. Another lens that I use so frequently on this safari is the 70 to 200 because this gives you a great range um, compositionally and it allows you to show off the animal in its environment extremely well. I don't use a very wide angle lens too often. If I would, it'll mainly be in the Amboseli when massive herds of elephants get close to the vehicle and you want to use a, a wider angle. I would recommend a 2470 being probably the max. You wouldn't really want to go much wider than that. Um, but if you are into extremely wide type shots, pack it in. If you've got space and you're capable of carrying it along, bring it along. We can put it to the test. Um, that's about it for, for camera gear. Stock up on memory cards. Make sure you've got storage so that you can import every day and back up your images. 
Um, use of tripod is something we get asked quite frequently. We spend majority of the time in the vehicle shooting um, and they're long days out on safari. We spend about five to six hours a day or in, in the mornings out on safari and about four to five hours in the afternoon. So they're long days out on safari, but we maximize the time out in the field, um, maximizing your opportunity to witness incredible wildlife and game viewing. Um, so vehicle bound, a tripod is gonna be too bulky, might get in the way. If anything, I'd recommend a monopod, but as I'd mentioned, we have bean bags in the vehicles, which will, um, allow you to stabilize your camera on um, and yeah I wouldn't recommend carrying a tripod it will just be extra weight that you're carrying along um, and it won't really come in good use you might think astrophotography the lodges we use unfortunately there's a lot of light pollution a lot of big trees and so you won't be able to see the night sky too well firstly and secondly if it is a dark night and you can see stars uh, the trees will become quite an eyesore because unfortunately we are not allowed to traverse these reserves after dark. Um, but one more thing, going back to the vehicles, what I forgot to mention, in the vehicle as well, what we do have apart from the fridge with the drinks and the, the, the bags with the snacks, is we've got a charging station. So if you need to make use of electricity to charge your cell phone or camera batteries or something like that, or your headlamp or your torch batteries, you can charge it in the vehicle as we drive around out in either the Masamara or Amboseli or wherever we are. Um, but that's about it for those three topics. And the chat I wanted to have with regards to what truly is the best of Kenya. And I do hope with everything I just said and the testimonials I just read, and obviously the footage that you guys got to see, I really hope that it served its purpose and it's getting you excited to join myself and WildEye in Kenya in the near future because I can assure you I'm very excited to host you on a safari one day soon and definitely changing the way you see the world. But for now, I'm going to say goodbye. I thank you again for your time, for watching, listening. And if you have any questions, please don't hesitate to, to get in touch. We're here to help you. And like I said, we're here to change the way you see the world. Bye-bye.